Hi, it's Jo from Minerva. Today we're going to have a little look at one pattern but ten fabrics. The pattern we're going to look at is the Carolyn Pyjamas. It is by Closet Core Patterns. It looks complicated and it can take you a long way in sewing but it can also be uh, a great place to start and then build up your skills. I'm wearing a top for the closet core pattern today with piping detail so I've taken the pattern to um, a place where I can get maximum sewing skill but you could buy that pattern and start with the bottoms and wear a ready to wear top and then you could try the short sleeve top without the pocket, without the cuffs, without the piping. I've made a flannel one like that, a brush cotton one when I first had it. I chose some Winsiette flannel with little slots on and I tried the pattern in its most basic form and that helped me to understand how to make the collar. And then as I got more confident, then I could try some different features and move my sewing on. Using different fabrics can also um, move your sewing on because if you choose different fabrics, you'll have different sewing skills. If you're choosing a cotton just to get started, then you can move to a crepe or a silk and you can make a silky pair or you can add the piping. One of the great things about making your own pyjamas is it's quite an investment in time, like it takes quite a long time to make this, but you really do look after it and keep it. And if you pre-wash your fabric first, then you'll get pyjamas that last a long time. What is a real bugbear of mine is to buy ready-made pyjamas and you buy them and on Christmas Day they look fantastic. And then after the first wash, the legs are flapping up round your ankles and everything's too tight and it's all shrunk. So if you make your own, you can pre-wash your fabric. You can make sure it's cut on the grain as well, which is another bugbear of mine. So if you buy ready to make wear ones and then all the legs twist in, all the sleeves twist round, all the side seams twist round. So if you make your own, you can make really top quality pyjamas that last a long time. The other great thing about making your own pyjamas is that you can choose the designs and some of the design elements for yourself. So we're going to have a look at those today. We're going to have a look at some piping options and some different types of fabric to get a different look with the Carolyn pyjamas. The pattern goes from size zero, that's a 30 inch bust, up to a 46 inch bust, which is a 20, it's a US pattern. I've made um, my daughter one of these, so I made the size zero, she's 14, and it was a really good fit. But you can get um, sizes right up to 20. The first fabric I want to show you is um, quite a simple fabric, just a plain cotton. My fabrics do start on a um, video from the easiest up to the most difficult. So this is um, just 100% broadcloth cotton. And broadcloth sort of makes it sound like it's going to be a really thick fabric. So if you see broadcloth on our website, it's a cotton that's similar to poplin. It's a little bit denser than poplin. It doesn't have the same sort of lustrous finish. It's got a very dense weave. That's what um, broadcloth is. So when it's made, you get a matte finish, but you get quite a dense weave. So you don't get a drape with it as such. You wouldn't be wanting to really make a dress with big sleeves in this. It would be quite big. But for pyjamas, it's great because it presses really well. So if you want to learn how to do this collar, you can practice with this and it's uh, it's stable, it's dense, it presses well and it's not too expensive. It comes in 87 different colours. So if you can't find a pyjama colour there, well, what are you looking for in a pair of pyjamas? It is 44 inches wide. This one's called Amethyst. There's a couple of different blues on there. And it's used for shirts and blouses and skirts. So that's a great place to start if you want to make a pair of cotton pyjamas and you want to just try out the bottoms on the Carolyn pyjamas.
the fabric that I've made these in is called 100% cotton lacquer fabric and although you can't see it on here it's got tiny tiny little stars on and they're just sort of printed within the fabric this is quite a medium weight fabric a little bit thicker than just a lawn it doesn't gather very well it's quite firm so that's why it's good for making the collar because it presses really well it comes in two colors um ivory white oh it might be three and cream and this one isn't too expensive so it's another good one for uh having a go at trying the pattern out If you're new to the Carolyn pyjamas pattern, then you might want to try a real budget fabric because you do need quite a lot. You need four or five metres for the long uh, pyjama bottoms and long sleeve top. Um, so you might just try something to try your skills out. This is a sea sucker. This one's 100% polyester, which is why it's cheaper. And it's 58 inches wide, so it's super good value because you can... Um, get two folds on this fabric or you could get one fold and add the button band down the one side it's a really lightweight perfect for the shorts version because it's a really light little bit see-through i don't know if you can see me through it it's got that little sea sucker texture this one comes in three colors and it's an ideal first fabric for your first pair of Carolyn pyjamas. One of my favourite fabrics for making uh, these pyjamas is Rose and Hubble Poplin. So this is a cotton that's got a really luxurious sort of soft finish on it. It's a little bit thicker than lawn, but um it hot uh, rose and hubble have really beautiful floral fabrics and it has enough drape to get a good gathered waistband but you can make a really traditional pair of pajamas you can match that up with a lot of different piping so you could take any piping color and use it for the collar um i made a rose and hubble pair with a uh, green piping and you can see it just makes the fabric pop This one is 44 inches wide. It comes in two colours. This one's got a navy background. The other one in this pattern has a ivory background or a cream background. And it's just, you would get a really luxurious pair of cotton pyjamas using Rose and Hubble cotton poplin. If you like the weight of cotton lawn, because you think it would make good um, summer pyjamas, which it would, it's really good for the long ones as well because it's very soft and it's very pliable. This is some cotton lawn from Stores London and this is beautiful. It is in the higher budget but if you like the feel of Liberty fabric but all those sort of uh, ditzy florals aren't your thing then Stores London have the same quality lawn but their patterns are still botanical but they're a little more modern a little more avant-garde this one is 58 inches wide so even though it's in the bigger price bracket you do get a good width and it's a light weight 100% cotton lawn and when you pick again a bit like the Rose and Hubble one when you pick a fabric like this then you can add some piping that really and you could take any color from there couldn't you and it would make it pop so if you had your piping along here you could really pop out one of those colors that's a teal on there that's a flanged piping you can um, get this too on our website it comes in 45 different colors it's ready made it's called flanged piping because it's already got this flange for you to sew it on here and the piping is in the middle you can make your own piping um, but that is quite skillful because you've got to hold two layers of fabric together and your cord inside some binding so if you've not seen ready-made one before that's a really good way 
to get started on having a go at some piping. Of course, if you want to try piping, you could try the sleeve and not the collar. And then once you get better, you can keep adding each detail. Now for something a little bit fun, I've chosen this lobster print broadcloth. Now, this definitely feels different to the lawn and the rose and hubble. It's much firmer. It's that dense weave again from broadcloth. And you can see it's a very large print. And you can play with that print. You can do lots of pattern matching if you want. But it is quite difficult because the pattern has a lot of pieces and it uses a lot of fabric anyway. And actually, it's so crazy. Who needs pattern matching when uh, you can just make sure you get a good pattern placement rather than pattern matching? I'm all for pattern balance rather than just straight on matching. And if you're going to go for the front element, then I think pairing it with something like a polka dot piping, that's a, uh, a flanged one that's ready made, is really, really fun. So because you've got that white edge, you can add your piping and still pick up that red from the lobster. I think that's really good fun. I mean, who wouldn't want lobster pyjamas? But it is a stiffer fabric, so this one would make maybe the long sleeve pyjamas um, more of a winter autumn version, depending on where you live in the world. This one is often used for making shirts, so check out, um, if you click on this fabric below, you can see all the projects that people have made with it. People have made dresses, pyjamas, um, men's shirts, and they all look really great. And that might give you a little bit of an idea about how you would go about uh, balancing this fabric when you're cutting out your pieces. Talking of autumn winter, my next fabric pick is a brushed cotton or a flannel and this one has a really cozy soft plush feel so you might see this listed as um, brushed cotton flannel or the word winciet this one's uh, named winciet this is a lilac color but this one does come in a lot of other colors as well so if you wanted a stronger color you could and again, you could try this with a different piping. So you could get a different colour. You could use the polka dot one on here to pick up. If you put purple polka dot on there, that would be beautiful. But my, my brushed cotton ones are made just with the flannel because you're going to get, with a thicker fabric, you're going to get a thicker amount of um, layers to join there. So um, I would avoid piping if you're using this thicker winciette because you're already getting quite a bit of bulk. But you will get a super cosy winter pair of pyjamas. This one's 41 inches wide. So the pattern does give uh, fabric requirements for um, a narrower fabric and a wider one. This fabric's um, one of our reorderable fabrics. So you'll um, be able to get this um, for a long time. But if you look up those words, flannel, brush flannel, then you'll find some um, pattern ones. So uh, there's different ones that come in at different times. You will get cartoon ones or child ones or um, I've made sloth pyjamas. And although, it, the pat although the fabric was for children, it actually made a really fun pair of adult pyjamas. My next set of fabric choices are for crepe. So I've made this a size bigger than I would normally cut for a blouse size, which is why it looks quite sort of bulky. But if you make um, that comfortable, roomier size up, but you use a crepe, you'll get a sort of drape here and a real luxurious pair of pyjamas. This is Italia Brunette Viscose Crepe. It's 100% viscose. It's a light to medium weight. It's got a sort of luster 
not a shine it's just got a really really soft finish a slight sort of I can't just a little bit of a shine but not like satin and this comes in 22 different colors perfect for making the Carolyn pajamas and what's also great is Italia brunette do a piping so you might find if you chose a patterned crepe that you could find matching piping or you could use one of their pattern pipings with a solid fabric and what's interesting about these piping uh, sets is that they're made of viscose as well and you don't often find that they're normally made of a sort of poly cotton or uh, a sort of cotton fabric but not very often in a sort of uh, a viscose finish so that way you would get quite a sophisticated look to your pyjamas that's pretty luxurious. The second crepe I've got to show you is from John Caldor. So if you like that sort of bold print and uh, vibrant colours and designs, then John Caldor is certainly a place to go and have a look. You can uh, narrow that search down into fabrics. This is 100% polyester. So you've got the same drape, but using polyester. So this is slightly heavier than the last one. The viscose was quite light. This one is a little bit heavier. But again, you can get that sort of luxury, silky pyjama feel. Ideal for the summer ones, this, because it's... Uh, you can make the shorts with it, you can make the short sleeve top and get a sort of lighter feeling set of pyjamas. And it's got a matte finish, so this one hasn't got the shiny finish like the other one. And I thought it would be really good fun if you used some metallic piping. So a flanged piping that's ready made can look really, really rock and roll superstar if you add that to a floral so if you've got a matte floral and then you add that piping it's really really interesting texture match and although um a metallic piping is a little bit scratchy you know it's uh, not what you'd want up here you don't get any of that piping touching your skin it's just adding the detail to the fabric so this one is 57 inches wide and it's by John Caldor. I've saved the best and the most tricky to last. Um, I've got a John Caldor chamoose and this is a silky satin one. And this comes in two colours and this definitely has a satin finish, a sort of gloss to it. It's got that really nice sort of palm design. The other one's a blue one. It's 57 inches wide. It's 100% polyester. So you're getting that sort of silky finish, but without the cost. And that is beautiful. That is one luxurious pair of pyjamas. I mean, it's going to be trickier to sew. You're going to have to do some tacking and you're going to need some really fine pins to pin that together. But I also think that even though it's really pale, the tones are really pale, if you mix that up with one of the um, Italia Brunette piping uh, reels, that's a firm colour, you can really pin down that darkest tone from there so that's a amaranti one so that would actually that is a perfect match for the one that i had before but i think when you mix it up a bit like i have here you can really see the design lines of using piping so this one is my final luxury carolyn pajamas and that's a john caldor silky satin
if you're new to piping then um, don't be frightened by all of this you could just pipe your pocket first of all just to learn how to get your sewing machine uh, foot really really close to the piping first problem you encounter when you're piping is that you don't sew close enough to the pipe and you will need a zipper foot or even a foot that's even narrower than that so you can run your sewing machine really close to the edge of the piping if you find that there's not piping to match the color that you want you can make your own so we sell the innards of piping cord that's just the cord it comes in different thicknesses and then you can use a piece of bias binding and you can pin it together and make your own so you would run the machine down here to hold the cord in place and then you would apply it some people try and do that all in one go so they're putting the cord in the binding and the two layers of their uh, fabric together but that is very tricky it's best to make your binding first so that the cord definitely stays in place you can get a thicker one as well so depending on what you are going for and where you're going to put it you'll definitely need the narrow one for around the neck the other little accessory that i like to put in pajamas are um a label because the pajamas last so long that um, it's worth putting the label in just to remind yourself uh, what a great job you did I like the Kylie and the Machine ones. There's lots of these. Um, I'll tag one or two below, and then if you click on it, you can look at the whole range. I quite like the sweary ones. Those are those there. I'll put those behind. Um, this says you can't buy this. And I think when you make pajamas like this, you really can't buy them like this that won't shrink, that won't twist, that last an awful long time. All of the fabrics that I've selected today are listed below. Um, if you click on them, you can go and have a look what other people have made. If you click on the Carolyn pyjama pattern, there are so many people who have made it and will rave about the pattern. You can see some of their modifications, how they've added details, how they've taken details away so that they can get themselves started. And you will also see the huge range of fabrics that people try the Carolyn pyjamas with. Once you've made the Carolyn pyjamas once and you've followed the pattern explicitly, then you can start experimenting a little bit. So this is my daughter's pair. So this one has um, turn up sleeves because I'm thinking I might need to let them down if she gets a bit bigger. And I've also put some lace. I didn't pipe the pocket. I had some crochet lace, so I put a little bit of that on there. This has got a top stitched collar, so this one's not piped, but it's got um, some top stitching around the collar that holds all of that down. That one's in a cotton lawn. I would say if I bought any pyjama pattern, it would be this one. This one um, is going to last me for a lifetime. The only other pattern I um, have is a family pyjama pattern. So I have one that's got uh, boys, girls, ladies, men's. And so I can use just the bottoms off there if I just want elasticated ones. But then if I want to sew some interest, then I can use the Carolyn one. So really, it's an investment of a pattern, but one that will last a lifetime. If you have any questions about making the Carolyn pyjamas, then you can ask them below. Or you can go and have a look at the Carolyn pyjama pattern and maybe some other makers can answer your questions too. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.